The electric motor which drives this hand milling machine is an induction motor controlled by a manually operated thermal overload switch. When an induction motor is connected directly to the power lines, the initial electron flow to the motor is approximately six times the normal full load flow. This initial overload is useful in quick starting and causes no damage to a modern motor. A thermal overload switch provides automatic protection against sustained overloads which would harm the motor. This switch is similar in principle to the one used on the milling machine. Pushing the handle in one direction closes the circuit. Pushing it in the opposite direction opens the switch. With the cover removed, the working parts of the switch are seen in motion as the contacts are forced in and then released. Automatic protection against overloads is provided by thermostats built into the switch. When the switch handle is pushed up, triggers are set against the thermostat, so movement will release the trigger and open the switch. To understand how this thermal overload switch operates, a clear understanding of the action of a thermostat is necessary. This bar consists of two strips of different metals joined together. They operate on the same principle as the thermostat in the switch. When heat is applied to the strips, they expand. Since they are made of different metals, one strip expands faster than the other. This difference in expansion produces a bending action of the bimetal bars. The force produced by the bending action can be applied to such devices as the trigger in a thermal overload switch. In this thermal overload switch thermostat, the bimetal strips are heated within themselves by a sustained excess flow of electrons. They are designed to overheat at the same rate as the motor will overheat when subject to an overload. There are two bimetal strips, here shaped in horseshoe form. As the metal strips are heated, they bend and press against the trigger release. The strips will bend far enough to release the trigger and open the switch before the overload continues long enough to damage the motor. Where automatic or remote control is desirable, the magnetically operated across the line starter is used. A push button station is one of the most common methods of controlling this starter. Pressing the start button operates the starter mechanism. When the start button is pressed, the control circuit is closed. The electrons flow in from line one. across the starting switch and through coil M. The alternating flow in the control circuit is here shown as unidirectional flow. Coil M becomes magnetized as the electrons flow through and it draws up the contacts. The contacts MX now short circuit the start button. The button can now be released. Contacts MX maintain the control circuit. Independent of the start button, as long as coil M is energized. Now the stop button is pressed. Operating the stop button breaks the electron flow through the entire circuit. When coil M is no longer energized, all the contacts open. When excess electrons flow through the thermostatic element and the thermal overload relay heats to a certain predetermined temperature, it will operate. A contact opens and de-energizes the control circuit. When 
coil M is de-energized, all main contacts and contacts MX open exactly as they do when the stop button is pressed. Coil M is de-energized whenever the line voltage falls too low, thus providing the machine with complete low voltage protection. Another across-the-line starter in common use is the drum-reversing switch for a three-phase motor, here shown in operation on a lathe. By moving the controller handle to certain positions, the operator is able to start the lathe running forward, to stop the lathe altogether, and to reverse the direction. This panel wiring will show the theory of operation of the drum-reversing controller. The lines from a three-phase, three-wire service are connected to terminals at the right side of the panel. The three wires at the left go to the motor. To use this panel, first check to see that the service switch is open. Then connect the service and motor wires straight across the board. Close the switch. The motor turns the screw. Note the direction. Open the switch again. Reverse the connections of any two wires. Close the switch and the motor now turns the screw in the opposite direction. This process of shifting connections is accomplished in the drum controller mechanically when the handle is turned to different positions. In this position, the center, or stop position, all contacts are disconnected. Moving the handle to the left or forward position connects all three sets of contacts straight across. Moving the handle to the right or reverse position connects the two top right terminals together and connects the two top left terminals together. The bottom terminals are again connected straight across. Electrically, when the handle is in the off position, there is no contact between any terminals and no electrons are flowing. When the handle is moved to the forward position, the contact bars make a connection between L2 and T2 and L1 and T1, and L3 and T3. At a given instant, electrons flow through the motor coils in the direction shown by the arrows. Since the rapid change of direction that is characteristic of alternating electron flow cannot be shown here, we are showing the electron flow as if observed during the split second while it was traveling in one direction and before it reverses and starts in the other direction. This is called instantaneous polarity. The motor is now turning to the right. When the controller handle is moved from forward to reverse, the motor will turn in the opposite direction. Contact bars T1 and L2 and T2 and L1 are connected. There is no change between contacts L3 and T3. Now note that the flow through two of the coils is reversed. The motor turns in the opposite direction because its rotating magnetic field has been reversed. Another across-the-line starter is this magnetic reversing switch. It is really two magnetic across-the-line starters built into one unit. One starter is connected for forward motion, the other for reverse. It starts, stops, and reverses the motor.
When the forward button is pushed, the coil is energized and closes the forward contacts. At the same time, a mechanical interlock prevents the reversing contacts from closing and causing a short circuit. Pushing the forward button makes contact between C1F and F2 and at the same time breaks the contact between AR and F4, making it impossible for both coils to be energized at the same time. This is an electrical interlock. Electrons flowing through coil FM produce an electromagnetic field which closes all forward contacts and auxiliary contact FX. After these contacts close, the forward button returns to close the circuit between AR and F4. Pressing the reverse button stops the forward motion of the motor and causes it to turn in the other direction. This is what happens inside the starter when the motor is reversed. The interlock now prevents the forward contacts from closing. Pushing the reverse button breaks contact at AF and R4, interrupting the flow and de-energizing coil FM. All forward contacts are allowed to open as the electromagnetic field disappears. As pressure on the reverse button continues, contact is made between C1R and R2. As coil RM is energized, all reverse contacts and auxiliary contact RX close simultaneously. motor can be stopped at will by pressing the stop button which opens the circuit. This action takes place inside the starter. Pressing the stop button opens contacts L1 and S2, stopping the flow of electrons through coil RM. As the electromagnetic field of coil RM disappears, all reverse contacts and auxiliary contact RX open simultaneously and all electron flow stops in the magnetic reversing switch.